All right, welcome back to Kyrie Dice. So after Ramstead Cliffside, you're going to go straight into more monsters, more problems without restoring in between. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to spoil the story just a little bit. Uh, Aisling had captured Remy, but she escaped. So she's going to start over here, working her way towards the middle. Whereas the rest of our party is over here, working our way towards the middle. Basically, the win condition is here is having... Uh, one of each of those parties uh, next to the green space in between and there's other versions of win and loss if she doesn't make it or if one of us uh, up here don't make it there's also a timing sort of can you know rule set here where aisling is chasing her so at the end of her third turn fourth turn fifth turn you know she's gaining ground okay but besides that you're just gonna play like usual uh remy here uh, the guys here um there's also a special thing here patrick's gonna go last all the time and the earth Lau and the fraggers are not going to do their otherwise move towards the closest opponent thing all right so let's put this away let me readjust these tiles that i moved i believe she's there and i believe my remy is going to start over here Okay, so there's a ton of cards in this deck. I got the uh, Cave Sickles, Water Lao, uh, Earth Lao, Fragors, uh, the Gev. Lots and lots of stuff. And obviously all my stuff from the previous mission. So we already know Patrick's going to go last. So I'm just going to put his card at the end of the line. Because there's so many cards, I'm probably going to line up some cards on the right and some cards on the left. I'm not sure why I have these items over here. These are backpack items. Um, let me shuffle here. And let's see who goes first. So it looks like Fraggers are going to go first and do nothing. Zeke, Erdlau, my summon, Waterlau. Okay, there's also another rule. Before you start, uh, Remy's going to do a Perception 10 check to check what this is. So uh, let's see. Uh, her Perception is 3. All right, so I need to roll a 7. And then you're going to read a blurb in the book. All right, so I rolled a six. So I technically failed, so I don't know what this is. But you're going to see what it is in a couple of seconds, actually. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, because she has to move in, and you're going to see what's going to happen because she's activating before Remy. All right, so let's not waste any more time. So the fragger is going to go. Uh, again, they don't do their otherwise move towards the closest thing, so they're already done. All right, then Reek's, uh, uh, Zeke is up. And he is over here. And I think what we're going to start doing is start pounding on this Gev over here and try to get rid of these things as fast as possible so we can all cross the bridge one at a time and make our way towards the middle. Okay, so let's use one to move, two for euthanasia. All right, so it's kind of far, sorry. I can't really move my camera that far up, but uh, he's here. He's going to go one, two, I'm uh, sorry, one. Uh, actually, you can go just up. He's going to go one, two, three, four. He's going to sit right over here. He doesn't have to move. One, two, three, four. Perfect. He's in his SOI. Uh, he can't see the other one because his red boulder's in the way. Uh, so there you go. Euthanasia spell on him. So I can't empower it. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do Gore Shot first because if I miss a Gore Shot, I'm going to get another plus one token. And then I'll be able to do Euthanasia. So let's exhaust the Gore Shot. I always forget I should do that one first every single time. It's going to be a teal plus six. Uh, that's six plus six. I always end up rolling really well on my Gosha when I don't want to. All right. Uh, and let me get their card. All right. So this is the brand new grizzled uh, Gev card. So remember, you use this during uh, common levels. Uh, so you got to upgrade this card. And their defense just got a much higher, much higher health. And they're much scarier than they were before. Okay. So... Uh, their conviction check is really poor. It's easy to take these guys down with magic. So it's going to be a teal and a white. All right, so they need to get a 12. Let's see if they're going to get a 12. And they got a 10. All right, so they fail. That's going to be two damage. I'm not going to take the damage for that. Actually, you know what? Yeah, sure. Let me take the damage. Let's give him four damage. Let's give myself two damage. So I'm going to be at four. All right, then after that, I already paid for the euthanasia. I'm still doing things out of order. Sorry about that. Um, so I will pay the plus one for that. Uh, just because if I miss, I'm going to get the token back anyway. All right, so it's going to be whatever I roll plus one. So three, four, that's going to be ten. All right, and their uh, conviction check again. We already know what it is. It's these two. And wow, they got 14. Box cards. <laughs> so they protected against uh, my powerful spell. Um, and there you go, they're done. 
uh, well, he's done. And then the Earth Loud's gonna go. Again, we already know they're not gonna do their move towards the closest guy, so they're pretty much done. Then my uh, summon's gonna go. Um, and guess what? She's probably gonna go there and launch a gore shot to the red. Actually, alternatively, she can come down here. But you know what? Because um, it's the water Lao after. Let me see. When do they activate? They activate after all my guys. So, yeah, let's actually, actually all go after the same one. All right. So she's gonna move. She's over here. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. So she's here. All right. So there's was one to move. Let's exhaust her to do gore shot. Let's just do that. Uh, that's gonna be a teal. Uh, you know what? Uh, should I empower it? Let's see her other abilities. Uh, yeah, I'll empower it. Why not? So I'm gonna roll a black and a teal. Roll this. Uh, well, that's gonna be pretty awful. That's gonna be just a three plus six nine. They're probably automatically gonna pass it unless I roll really badly. <laughs> Another thirteen. Almost box cards again. All right. So there you go. They're on fire. Uh, <laughs> It's gonna be one of those matches, I think, or one of those missions. Um, all right, well, there you go. There's my summon, pretty fast. Uh, okay, now the water Lao is gonna go. Okay, so uh, could she, anyone in SOI, anyone next to her, blah, 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 blah. She's gonna move and attack range six. So she's gonna move closer. She's gonna come right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they do it on purpose for you to move there because now what's gonna happen, you're gonna read the book, all right? And let me just remove the token. And what it's gonna say is that there was a trap that the Aisling had set up or Aisling had set up so that if you go through, you'll get paralyzed, but it's for the monsters coming into her cave. Uh, she's preventing it, so on, so on. So she's gonna lose half her life. So that's gonna be out of 18, that's gonna be uh, nine. It's gonna give her nine damage. So four and a, sorry, six and a three. And she's gonna suffer paralyzed. Uh, if I can find a paralyzed token, there you go. Uh, so she's gonna basically end her turn. It says uh, discard at the end of your next turn and gain immunity poison. So right now her turn is over because she's paralyzed. All right, type of thing. Okay, that's it. That's done. All right, so next is gonna be Nightingale. So Nightingale is actually right over here. Um, I think what I'm gonna do with her is let's see there's still a bunch of people that can go before so if I go right over here and sling a few arrows um, Actually, I want to be more than two spaces away because they have dodge and counter and if I'm more than two spaces away They won't be able to counter back so can I actually see them from here one two three four five? I do have line of sight. I'm not going through any allies and I'm not going through uh, The terrain so I think this is a straight shot and I'm able to hit all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay put and just launch a few arrows. Okay, let me move in a bit. Okay, so uh, she's got her three SP. So staying put, she's going to spend two. Um, uh, the reason I'm not going to empower it is because I sort of want to attack again afterwards because those things, remember, they dodge their first attack every single time. Okay, so I paid for the attack. That's going to be a orange and a teal. Okay, remember, though, that they dodge every single time. So let's see what they dodge at. Their defense is, let me go check. It is 12 base plus one. So it's going to be 13. I got to roll a 13 on this. Now, the, if they dodge, they get a courage token, which is really bad. I don't want them to get any courage tokens. So let's see what happens. Um, so this is going to be an 11. You know what? I, I like the seven. I'm going to reroll that, uh, that four. So I'm going to use my quiver here, which lets me reroll a die, just not the black one. Fine, I'll reroll the green one. Uh, nice, and I got an eight. So this is gonna be 15 minus, let's see, 12 plus one. Um, so it's 13, so I'm starting at two damage. All right, uh, every shield is a damage, so two, three, four, five. The star is two damage, seven damage. Uh, now, I'm at seven damage. Remember this barbed wire, uh, barbed arrows. If I hit something with no armor, it does plus three physical damage. Let me just show you. Here you go. Uh, so when you make an attack against a target with no armor, which those guys don't have armor, gain plus three physical damage. So I forgot what I was at. <laughs> so let me calculate that again. So 15 minus 13, that's two. 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, plus 3, 10. Um, this is plus 3, 10. Looking around, looking around. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be 10 damage. A 10 and a 4. Yes, 10 more. They're really far away. Uh, so they're at 14 out of 18. I just need four more damage. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to pop my uh, my Nightingale power right. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to launch, do my infection here. So I'm going to exhaust this. Boom. And what that allows me to do is allows me to do an action with a one SP discount, but it's going to cost me one damage. So I'm going to take one damage and I'm going to attack again with one SP instead of costing two SP. So I'm going to roll the exact same thing. It's going to be a teal and an orange. All right, now I just have to hit because of my plus three damage. As long as I hit, get one damage, plus three damage, it's automatically going to die. All right, so let's see if I hit. Uh, is three the lowest die the value on this dice? Yes, it is. That's awesome. You know why? Well, you know why. I'm going to do kill the messenger. All right, so kill the messenger it's an awesome skill you must get it if you're a bone arrow guy uh, it turns a lowest value die to the highest value by exhausting it so i don't even know if i explained that correctly but you get the idea i'm going to turn a three into an eight so already that's a hit 14 minus 12 that's two damage three four five six seven uh, eight nine ten with the uh, barbed arrow that's enough he's gonna die um yeah i'm gonna take him off the board in two seconds uh before i do forget I did want to do my uh, Paradigm Assault here. Um, so who should I give bonuses to? Well, I see Rook is coming up next. Or, I sh actually, Remy is way too far. <laughs> it has to be somebody in my SOI. So I'm standing there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give uh, Zeke a haste token. And that's pretty good because this stuff always costs a lot as being a mage. So he's going to get an extra SP every single round that he can use for magic spells or movement or whatever he needs to do. Um, so I think she's done. Not much else she can do. All right. So let me get rid of that. Uh, that. Okay. So he's gone. Okay. Up next is going to be Rook. Let's grab his guy. All right, so this is going to be pretty fast. What I think I'm going to do with him is just get up close and personal with this Gev over here and attack him. Now, the danger is that he's going to dodge, and he, this guy is more dangerous because he's in hindered terrain, so it's going to be 12 plus 1 plus the dodge. Oof, that's going to be really tough to hit. And by attacking him, he's probably going to have a counter against me. So do I just go there and block him in, maybe? That's probably my best bet, really. Um... Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So let's spend an SP to move. I mean, it might sound a bit weird, but it's probably the best thing. Let me go look at the Gev card. Uh, so if there's somebody adjacent, it's going to do in a... So look, uh, the first time he can dodge. Uh, if he successfully dodges, he gains courage, and I don't want him to get courage. That's an extra two tokens, and that's an extra three damage on each of his attacks every single time which is really bad. And then every time he dodges, he's going to counter with reach two. So this is almost always going to happen, especially if he's in uh, hindered terrain. All right, so if somebody's adjacent, then he's going to attack and then make a move and attack again. Ideally, I want him to do this one here, which is attack somebody in reach two, and that's pull somebody in, and that's all he's going to do. Uh, or it's going to do uh, move uh, to somebody at reach two, and then move again, somebody reach two, and do two separate attacks. All right, type of thing. But you know what? I'm going to ignore him for now. I'm going to make him move out of this hindered terrain and then attack him afterwards. So let's go one, two, three. Actually, I'm going to go higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I obviously don't want to go through here. He's going to get a break attack against me, and that would be kind of foolish. Um, now, I can actually race to the end, maybe. But I think he's good there. I actually want the Gev to attack Rook maybe first uh, because he has a bunch of anti uh physical damage stuff so that's gonna be fine all right so that's gonna be it for rook now remy's gonna go and this is gonna be interesting what do i do with remy at this point i think for sure i'm gonna spend two sp to fly um do i even bother killing this thing because <sighs> she's just really hard to hit especially since uh, she has nine health and 11 and all my stuff does almost no damage i mean i can chuck her a knife 
because uh, I do have a thing that I can chuck at her and maybe that'll be good. So let me try that. So I'm going to move at six. Well, I'm going to fly. One, two, four, five, six. And what I'm going to do, whoops, is I'm going to uh, spend another SP to move an extra two. One, two. And I'm going to go right over here. Maybe this is a really bad idea. Let's give it a shot. All right, so from here, okay, so I spent all three of my SP to move, two to fly and one to move an extra two spaces. I'm just gonna move her stuff over here on the side. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is blade works. All right, you lose all your items, but you keep your skills, thankfully. Um, you know, if she was a mage, this would have been a lot easier. I would have just chucked some spells out there, but she's not a mage at all. Uh, actually, you know what? I would have kept my, sorry, instead of using my, uh, Instead of using the extra SP to move, I would have used the uh, like the shadows. Whoops, sorry, making a little change here. Uh, like the shadows, and let's do an attack. So my attack's gonna be a green and a purple, right? A green and a purple. Uh, so green and purple. So a really really high die and a really really low die. So probably gonna average out to about ten or eleven, I'm assuming. So their defense is eleven. So let's see if I get an 11 attacking right here. Uh, wow, that's pretty good. So that's gonna be uh, 14 minus 11, that's gonna be three damage. But the reason why they give you certain special items here is she's sort of by herself. So if you actually read the uh, the switch blade over here, if, you're, if she's by herself and there's nobody in her SOI, she gets uh, extra damage. And if her other weapon is light, she gets, oh sorry, or backstab, she gets even more damage. Um, so it's plus four uh, damage in total. That's what it says. All right, so that was three damage plus four. That's seven damage. All right, so let's give it seven damage. And you know what? Since I'm here and it's pretty much dead, let's just use my once per encounter ability here. Chuck it a purple knife and just take her out. So I just need to roll a two or above. And it was a three. That's fine. Boom. She's gone. All right, so that's gonna give me another loot. I'll deal with all the loot later. And I think she's done. She has another SP, uh, but she already used her movement for the round. Uh, I use my knife here um, and she's good. So there you go, that's it. Now the Gev is gonna go. Let's go through their card in detail this time, just to make sure we're doing it right. Uh, so is there a people adjacent? No, is somebody in reach two? No, even if I was here, she's not in reach two because there's a red border over here. Uh, so is there, uh, can it move and attack somebody within reach 2? Move to be reach 2 of the nearest opponent. The nearest opponent is obviously uh, Rook. So he's going to go 1, 2. All right, now he's in reach 2. Um, I believe because he has to attack through the green, I'm going to get a plus 1 as if I was in hindered terrain. So my defense is actually 12. So he's going to roll a green and a teal. Wow, those are pretty good dice. So it's going to be this minus 12. Oh, wow. Box cards or close to box cards because the green one goes to a, a much higher value. So this is going to be 16 minus uh, 12, which is already six damage. Oh, my goodness. OK, so six damage. Uh, the books are actually armor piercing. So my armor doesn't come into play. So I have zero armor right now. So six seven eight nine ten eleven i just took 12 damage and almost died from one attack all right let's take it 12 damage you know last mission i rolled really well uh for myself and really badly for the opponent it looks like it's going to be the opposite for this one so i'm going to give this to rook so he's at uh, 14 damage and his life is only 18 so he's close to death all right i'm gonna have to use the heal tokens right away on him all right, but after that, he's not done. So it's a move to be reached to of the farthest opponent within movement and do an attack. So to move, let's see, one, two. So the farthest right now is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it'll be a tie between these two characters, I guess. And uh, let's see, if you look at the initiative order, I guess it'll be Zeke that he, that he goes after uh, because he's first in initiative order. So I guess he'll go one, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, and he can stay right here, right? Am I correct? Yeah, probably. He's gonna go right here to attack Zeke. 
Yeah, because they're the same distance away. I mean, alternatively, you could have gone here and attacked Padrick, but Padrick is last in turn order. So yeah, I think this is fine. All right, so he's going to attack Zeke. Again, the exact same dice. Oof. And uh, guess what? Zeke doesn't have anything to dodge. Actually, no. He has something to dodge. He's definitely going to use it. So he has this uh, hoodie of deflection here. He's going to use it to dodge. So he's going to exhaust it. Uh, and when he dodges with this item, he gains plus one shield unless he rolls a uh, skull. Okay, so it's a pretty good item to dodge with. So let's see what he, let's see what uh, Zeke gets. So it's going to be ooh one two three four added to his eleven. So his defense is fifteen, which is phenomenal. All right, I don't think this is going to hit. Let's see what it does. Uh, well, he rolled a thirteen. He rolled a nine on it. All right, so that's going to be a miss, and that's going to be it for the gap. That's pretty good. All right, next up is going to be the uh, Capesicles. Now, they're going to do their usual thing. Nobody's adjacent. Nobody's within four. Could they move uh, and attack within four? Definitely. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. Yeah, so this one's going to come here. One, two, three, four, right? And then this one's going to advance one, two, three to go one, two, three, four. Yeah, so we're going to attack with him first. He's in the SOI. So for right now, these are Elder Sickles. So it's going to be two orange. Let's grab a couple of orange. So it's going to be the red one first. Uh, now my defense is, actually I'm kind of boosted up because of this nightgown, which is, has some hefty stats. So this adds six to my health, three to my defense. So my defense is three plus nine is actually 12. So the highest on the squad. And uh, I gain one armor, I believe. I'm uh, sorry, one speed. Uh, yeah, so I don't have any armor, but I do have 12, uh, I do have 12 defense. So let's see what happens. So this is a six. That's going to be a whiff. And now he's going to go one, two, three, and do the exact same attack. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's going to hit. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, actually, wait, I, I take, actually, yeah, I should have dodged. I said I would have dodged. Uh, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust this, and this lets me re-roll any die, whether it's an opponent or my own. So let's uh, tap it. Actually, let me read it. It says, at any time you roll any dice except the black die that is rolled or that was rolled against you. Yeah, so let's... Uh, I don't really like that. Uh, <laughs> that's 16. So let's re-roll this. And you know what? Let me just say that I dodged. Because I would have obviously dodged. I have the abilities for it just makes sense so let's say I dodge so it's gonna be something minus something wow it's still high so actually my defense is 12 13 14 all right so they've been 14 and they hit me with exactly 14 so it is a hit unfortunately uh, but I'm not gonna suffer that much damage uh, so each shield is one each star is one so 14 and 14 so it's gonna be one two three damage only uh, I don't have any armor so straight up three all right, sorry about that. A little bit of a take back with the dodge, but I would have obviously used it, right? Um, and that's it. Uh, sorry, Patrick's going to go last. Um, so let's give him his 3 SP, uh, which he has. So obviously he's going to use one to move, um, and he's going to use two to attack, right? Makes sense. And he's got a couple of dodge tokens, so that's fine. So he's going to move. Uh, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, three. Do I stand right here and just blast this Gev in the face? I think I will, because even with his dodge, oh, actually, he would have slid down the, the current here at the end of his turn, uh, because, uh, he's not heavy, so he would have followed the current, right? Yeah. So it would have been one, two, three, four, uh, right over here. All right, and what I'm going to do from here is obviously attack him. And the reason I'm attacking him is even though he's going to dodge is because uh, Patrick's up close and personal is a red and a green, which is insanely high value or uh, capability uh, total. So let's let's roll for the Geb first. I'm hoping for a zero or a skull. Nice skull. So he doesn't dodge. So his defense is only 12. All right, come on, baby. I gotta roll something really, really high or one die really, really low because he has killed a messenger also. Alright, so 
Well, there you go. That's actually not bad because again, the three is the lowest value die on the red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust his, uh, uh, sorry, kill the messenger, which is the exact same ability that uh, that Nightingale has. So I can swap the three into a nine and that becomes a hit. So that's going to be uh, 14 minus 12. So we're starting at two damage. Shield is plus one, three. The star is plus two. Five, um, five, five, five. I think it's just going to be five damage. All right, not as much as I wanted to do, but it's better than nothing. Um, and I think that's going to be it for his turn. And because he rolled a star, every time he rolls a star, you got to look over here, uh, he gets a dodge token. So I'm going to go get another dodge token and give it to him. I don't know where I put them. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's on the side somewhere. So let me grab all these cards, a ton of cards. Let's roll it. Uh, let's shuffle it and see what's up. Now, I really want Remy to go before these guys because I don't want them to poison me because that's going to be really, really bad. Um, and then I need uh, my magic dealer to go before the Gev to try to kill it because if the Gev goes again, I think he attacks everyone in his SOI, uh, in his melee, and that's going to be really painful. Uh, with four different attacks, uh, that's going to be really bad. All right, so it's going to be Remy first, which is excellent actually and it's gonna be my caster then Patrick then the Fragors, then Zeke oh this is gonna be wonderful it's gonna have all my magic guys before I got Remy going first and I'm running out oh, I gotta take out the water Lao card because they're dead and she's gone okay so let's start off with Remy okay so she's over here let's give her her 3 SP let's unexhaust her items her dress. Uh, she's at three damage. All right, so she's gonna use. Let's see. To move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. She can fly right over here. Oh, I did forget to put a totem here. Sorry, I'm missing a totem. Uh, I think it's a green one. I believe it's right here. I'm gonna double check the book after. Sorry about that. So she's gonna use two SP to fly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Her movement is seven because of her gown. She's gonna sit right over here. Um, or do I sit in, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna sit over here. All right, and from there, pretty simple over here. We're gonna do blade works. Uh, it's gonna be a, a purple and a green. So hope for the best, their defense is 10. I do, I do do plus four damage, remember, because she's by herself. Uh, so that's awesome. It's gonna be 11 minus 10 is one shield uh, two star is Actually the star is plus three damage. Actually, I, I screwed that up So when she got a star against uh, if you actually look at the second weapon here I was actually looking at this one But if you look at the weapon here the star is actually plus three and the shield is plus one Yeah, so this is an uncommon item actually. It's really powerful. So let me start that again. So it's 11 minus Actually, is this the lowest value on this die? Actually, you know what? A four is the lowest value on this die. So you know what I am gonna do? <laughs> Let's just kill that thing. So I'm gonna use uh, like the shadow, uh, sorry, not like the shadows. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> it's not her with that ability, it's Nightingale. Sorry, I'm getting confused. All right, so 11 minus 10, one damage. Uh, shield, another damage. The star, an extra three damage. We're at five. She's by herself, another four damage. So that's nine. And that's about it. So she does nine damage. Can't really add more to that, I don't think. Uh, but actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Because this is the lowest die, as long as I roll a seven or above, it's gonna kill her. So instead, what I'm gonna do is let's roll the, let's use the gown. Let's roll this again. Let's see if I can get a set, six or seven, because it is gonna, you know what? I need a six, because uh, with the symbol, it's gonna kill it. All right, and there you go, I roll a nine. So there you go, I'm gonna kill this, uh, this is a sickle. That makes more sense. All right, but I did activate pretty much all my abilities on that. Uh, so that would have been uh, 16 minus 10, six damage with all those symbols. We already calculated plus four damage, more than 12, uh, he's gonna die. Um, now, I guess I'm gonna use my other two SP to attack the other one. Yeah, sure, let's start taking it down. 
So I'm going to put it here. Uh, again, I roll the exact same thing. This time I can't re-roll anything. I'm at the whims of the gods here. Let's see, I need at least a 10. And I got a 12. So 12 minus 10 is 2. 2 shields, 4 damage. I'm by myself, another 4 damage. So that's going to be 8 damage in total. Not bad. Not bad at all. Boom. 8 damage. Oh, minus 1 because she's in, uh, he's in hindered terrain. Sorry about that. Got to always look for that hindered terrain. And there you go. She's done. All right. Next is going to be Elf, Elsie, Elfie, however you want to pronounce it. Oops. Uh, so let's on exhauster. Let's give her three SP. Uh, so it's going to be like that. Uh, pretty simple. I think for her, she's going to gore shot and uh, she's going to empower it. And she's going to gore shot the, uh, the Gev right in front of me. Um, so let's use a black die and a teal die. Come on, come on, come on. Something good, something good. Oh, yeah, that's it. So 7 plus 4, I'm rolling amazing. That's 11, 11 plus 6, 17. I'm not even going to bother rolling his defense for that. He's not going to hit. So that's going to be another 6 damage if I deal myself 2 damage. So I'm definitely going to do that. So that's going to be another 2 damage to her. All right, I am, uh, I'm killing myself slowly, slowly, but uh, I'm probably going to end up using a heal on her. All right, now what else can I do? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal myself again. How much damage do I have to give myself? I think it's one or two. Let me just take the card. It's kind of far away. Uh, it says, uh, pay two uh, SP, an ally within SOI, uh, gains a dodge token, and I got to deal myself one damage. So I'm going to deal myself one damage. So I'm going to go to three. Boom. And I'm going to give, uh, who should I give a dodge token to? Well, I'm not going to give it to Padre because he's already got three. I'm going to give a dodge token to Zeke, I guess. All right, so Gev is up next. Give him his 3 SP. Um, I think it's pretty simple. He's going to do exactly what he did last time. He's going to pay 2 to attack. It's going to be up close and personal, a red and a green. And the other one, you know, mine as well. I can either keep it to move, but I just really want to make sure he dies because he's the next activation. Uh, well, actually, he's not the next activation. I got Zeke coming up. Um, but I do want to kill it because even if I have one XP, well, I can do like the shadows move and then move towards the bridge. Um, yeah, you know what? That's fine. I'm not going to empower it. I'll just use two to do a, uh, straight up shot. So it's going to be a red and a, a, um, green. I remember those Gevs dodge every single time. Kind of annoying, but we'll see what happens. And he got plus two. So it's going to be 12. Uh, let me get rid of this. Uh, it's going to be 12 plus... Uh, two, which is 14. So I'm trying to hit a 14. That's really high. I'm sort of forced to try to get a nine on one of these. Uh, it's going to be like 50, 50, I think. So let's see what happens. Well, I did get a nine and a six. All right. That's going to be enough. So that's going to be 15 minus 14. All right. The 12 plus two. Uh, so that's going to be one damage. Uh, the, the two shields here is going to be uh, an extra two damage. So we're looking at three and the star is an extra two damage. Boom. He's at five damage. If I had five to that, he's still not dead. He's just hanging on. He's just hanging on. Uh, so he's at uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 out of 18. Very, very close. Uh, next, I'm going to obviously um, use the uh, like the shadows here to move two spaces away and it doesn't cause a break attack. And then I'll use my last SP to move. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six to hide right in the uh, hindered terrain right over there. Um, and I think that's going to be it for Patrick. That was a pretty successful round. I guess these two guys are just going to go run across the bridge uh, as soon as possible. Fragors, we already know they're not going to move towards us. And Zeke is up, hopefully going to be able to take out that Gev so that we can all cross. Okay, it's an exhausted stuff. Actually, he gets four SP. Remember, because of haste, um, and he got a dodge token last round from the uh, the summon. All right, so he's gonna spend um, one to do an empowered gore shot. Um, let's try this. Let's try to kill that thing right away. It's got two life left. As long as I gore shot it, it's gonna die. All right, so let's see what I get. Um, so that's not bad. It's gonna be four plus three. It's gonna be seven plus six. It's gonna be thirteen. Uh, now they're check is kind of garbage it's a teal and a white um so they're trying to get a 13 i believe uh, so, whew, 
I got an 11. That's really, really close. But guess what? Didn't make it. That's going to give me two damage. I don't even have to damage myself to do extra damage. He's going to die. All right, that's going to be another loot. I'll go get it later. Um, actually, by the way, I also forgot one thing. This is, should be a blue one, and it should go there. Sorry, a little, little mistake on my end. Uh, there you go. Uh, so now I guess I'll use one SP to move. Uh, so he moves at seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I guess he'll stay there. Does he have enough XP to move throughout the... So he would have been on top of Rook. Let's see, if he spends an extra two, he can move an extra four. Uh, one, two, three, four. No, he wouldn't have enough to make it the way, all the way. So he's going to have to be forced to stay there. And I guess next turn, we're all going to take turns running across this thing. Um, so that's going to be it for Zeke. Uh, let me get rid of the Gev card. Thankfully, he killed it right before they activated. That's phenomenal. Uh, Cape Sickle is going to go. There's going to be the triple attack here, but it's going to be a white and a uh, orange because there's nobody else next to him. Let me just go get their card quick, quick. So it's just this because there's not even one next to him, and they're going to do the is there somebody adjacent? So it's going to be uh, trying to hit a 12. <laughs> snake eyes okay so that's fine so that's a miss she's done uh rook's gonna go all right he's gonna be the first one to cross the bridge uh so he's gonna get his three sps at five he's gonna spend one so he's gonna do a seven movement one two three four five six seven um i think what he's gonna do is he's going to spend an sp to move an extra two to stay in the uh, green area right over here. And the reason I'm doing that is because when the Fragors activate next round, when the ability to move closer to an opponent than explode will actually trigger because even though they don't have range or anything, he can move at four, one, two, three, four, go in there, do an explosion, and then he'll be able to attack afterwards. Sort of like a sneak attack type thing. All right, so he's gonna be done. That cost me two SP, so he's gonna carry over three SP into the next round. So a lot of SP. All right, and then we're gonna have Nightingale, who is over here. I don't think she can make it across. It's just three SP, she's gonna use one to move. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's use another SP, six, seven, eight, nine. So she has, uh, she has a movement of seven, I used two SP, so a movement of nine. She's gonna go right in the corner over there. Next turn, run across, all right. Earthlaw, like we already know, they're going to do absolutely nothing because the otherwise move towards is not going to trigger. So he's going to stay right there. All right, so the only way that that Earthlaw is actually going to move is if somebody is in this section here so that they do their move and range to attack really close by. All right, let's give this a good shuffle. Let's cut it. So Nightingale is going to cross the bridge. I actually don't want Rook to go first because he's actually, I do want them to come in unfortunately uh looks like they're uh all right well the order here is not exactly what i wanted uh the uh, uh the uh capesicles are gonna go before remy as well all right so let's do this in order nightingale she's at four sp she's gonna spend one to move her seven one two three four five six seven um i know i mean might as well spend an sp she's gonna get the red chest i'm gonna go read what it is later i'm assuming just consumables and money uh, but I'll check that in a little bit and she's pretty much done Rook's gonna go Now for Rook, you know what? He's gonna do exactly what he did last mission <laughs> He's gonna spend a lot of time sitting in the woods and contemplating his life and just sit there. All right, so he's done Next cave sickle is gonna go do the exact same thing. We just did last round uh, Should I dodge this? You know what? I will dodge it. I'm gonna use my ability to dodge because I have it might as well use it uh, where's the black die? The dodge. All books. So that's a zero anyway. Let's see what happens. And he rolled a seven, so it's a miss anyway. All right, so that was a wasted turn. Uh, the summon's going to go. Now she moves at six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She's going to have to use three S her three SP uh, to make it all the way here. So she's going to carry over one into next turn. Actually, no, she has three already. Uh, so she's going to carry over two into next turn. And I'm going to unexhaust her stuff. She's going to waste three. And she's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now she has two SP left. Uh, she's going to actually give barrier. I'm going to go through her card. Uh, it's going to be one XP. 
It's the one over here. She's gonna take one damage. Uh, so it's a four. Um, and I'm gonna give barrier to somebody in my SOI. Let's tap this. And I'm obviously gonna give bar barrier to Rook, who's probably gonna get attacked by a bunch of things. But now with three armor, you can take a bunch of those explosions and not be hurt. Um, that's gonna be it for her. Uh, now the fraggers are gonna go. All right, so let's look at their card. I gotta go find it. Okay, so uh, the bulb stuff, obviously there's no bulbs on the board. Uh, is there anyone adjacent? No. Is there somebody in range six? No. So nobody has range to anything, okay? Now, this one, can it move and be adjacent to an opponent? So let's go in order. This one moves at four, one, two, three, four. Is he gonna be adjacent to an opponent? No, so he's not gonna do anything. All right, uh, the purple one is number two. All right, so he's going to go one, two, three, four. The answer is yes. So he's going to move. He's going to go right here. And he's going to do that purple explosion. So as long as it's not above three, I'm not going to get any damage. Well, it's six. <laughs> All right. I do have three armor. So that's going to be three damage to Rook. Um, okay. And uh, I should have paid attention because Rook actually needed the heal. Um, so, okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. And he's going to suffer six damage. All right, what I'm going to do is, because I actually forgot, uh, when uh, uh, Nightingale was there, she's going to use both of her heal tokens that she had. You know, sometimes uh, I do have to take some, uh, some uh, <laughs> takesy backsies because uh, a lot of stuff to manage. She would have used both of these on Rook, obviously, because he's super... Uh, uh, unhealthy because he took a ton of damage at the start of the mission and she had the heal tokens from the previous mission anyway so he would have healed for 12 all right so let me give it a 12 so he's at five damage right now all right sorry about that all right so that was this guy uh, then the orange one's gonna go so number three going down the same exact card line aside adjacent can it move and be adjacent one two three four no so he's actually gonna stay put and not do anything all right so they're all done uh, next is gonna be uh, my friend Zeke. I think he's just gonna run across the bridge. So let's give him his three SP. One to move. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, he's gonna use another SP to move two. One, two. And uh, let's spend another SP to move another two. One, two. All right, so he's done. Uh, Remy's gonna go up next. All right, so let's unexhaust their stuff. Uh, let's give her 3 SP. Um, oh, I have been forgetting to give her timer counters. Sorry about that. Uh, somebody's probably yelling that, that I'm forgetting. So what is this, round 3 or round 4? Uh, what I'm going to do actually, to keep track of it, is I do have my etched dice here. So let me use my purple ones. So I believe this is round 3, right? Because round 1... She flew in and killed the uh, the uh, water lao. Round two, she flew in here and killed the cave sickle, and this will be the end of her round three. So at the end of this round, um, I'm gonna put a three on her card. So at the end of her turn here, she, at the end of her turn, she gets her the third time token, and that's when Aisling enters the board right over here. So you know what? Just to prep that. I'm also gonna use one of these dice. This is the one. This is Aisling chasing her. It's a die. You know, I do have the miniature here somewhere. I think it's her. You know what? I'm just gonna put her on the board. <laughs> She's chasing her. Okay. Uh, just prepping that for the end of round three. Uh, but from here, pretty simple. Just attack the cave sickle again. Um, let's spend uh, blade works here. Uh, it's gonna be a purple and a green um and should i empower it yeah i want to kill it uh yeah i'm gonna have to kill it so let's uh, use one to empower so it's gonna be with the black die so let's see what happens here um uh, well that's not gonna be enough all books and a three so let's definitely re-roll one of those so with the nightgown there let's re-roll the three. Oh man but it's still 50 50 that i hit and it's a three so there you go that's a miss Let's spend the other two to attack again, but I can't empower it this time. So now, actually I need an 11 because he's in hindered terrain. Um, and I got an 11. All right, so that's gonna be 11 
So 11 minus 11, zero. Uh, one shield, so one damage plus four damage. That's gonna be five damage in total. Do I kill it? Uh, yeah, I kill it just on the nose. Five damage plus four is nine, plus three is 12. They have 12 life. Wow, that was very, very close. I almost died. All right, so at the, uh, before she finishes her turn, I'm just gonna do like the shadows here, just so that she can just keep moving. I'm just gonna go one, two. And now it's the end of her turn. Her timer will go to three. And that's when Aisling would be on this tile. So next turn, when the timer goes to four, she's going to jump to this tile and so on and so on. So we're just racing that way. All right, but it is almost over. We're, we're racing towards the middle. All right, so Remy's uh, gone. So next going to be Patrick. I wonder what he's going to do. All right, let's give him his three SP. On exhaust. All right, he's going to spend one to move. So he moves at the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah, I guess we're all gonna ball up in this. In the, in the the problem is if we all ball up here, these bulbs are gonna affect everyone. That be that's a pretty horrible plan. Um, so what I'm gonna do is let me use another. Uh, let's see if he moves one, two, three. His range is two, so it's going to be everyone here. So if anyone gets on these two spots here, the Earth Lao is going to come out, poke his head out, and start attacking us, which is not a fantastic idea. Uh, so I think I am going to hug this wall and just try to make it to the middle here. Um, so you know what? I think Patrick is good with two. He's going to generate three next round. He'll have five, and he'll be ready for anything that comes up. Um, yeah, so I think we're good. Uh, so that was Patrick down the Earth Lao. We already know he's going to do nothing. Uh, let's just go over his card one time because he has yet to do anything uh, just to show you. Uh, so he gives uh, S, he gives barrier to anyone in his SOI. There's no enemies there. Uh, is there more than one adjacent opponent? No. Can it move and attack somebody within reach two? No, because he only moves at four. So it's going to be one, two, three, and he can't move again. And reach two is all these spaces over here. So if anyone ends their movement there, then he will attack. And remember, just like the uh, scenario said, you're not doing the otherwise movement thing. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the round. Let's take all of these. Let's shuffle. And I don't know what I want. I think I want Rook and Zeke to go first. So they can turn the corner and just dump a bunch of spells and attack these guys. Uh, hopefully take out two of them before the third one goes and this one's really far he's probably gonna end up launching a bulb when they activate all right the you know what wouldn't be such a bad idea is if actually they activate first then again the purple one's gonna go the other two are gonna do nothing and then we'll be able to go around and just destroy them but we'll see what happens here it looks like it's gonna be remy then zeke oh then the fragors then padrick then elfie rook uh, Earth Lao, Cave Sickle. Actually, I forgot to get rid of the Cave Sickle cards. They're all gone. And there you go. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let's start off with Remy. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to run uh, in this area and we'll see what happens. So let's uh, go to our card. Let's get three SP. Uh, let's spend one to move. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's your movement. Now this totem is gonna see me while I'm moving. Um, so I don't know what this is yet. Actually, I do have to look at the red treasure as well. Um, but while I'm here, I'm actually gonna use an SP to look at the treasure. So I'm gonna look at this too. And there you go. So I'm gonna actually check that in the book and I'll be back. So I'm gonna check what those two treasures are and what that totem does. All right. So big changes here so when that totem actually sees you uh what ends up happening is um if she activated it then something interesting is going to happen with the timer system so we add an extra timer and if it was the team that activated it uh but then we're just going to add the capesicles um uh, and so on and so on so uh, the actual loot here was actually an uncommon item so i actually get, got uh, the uh i went through the all the uncommon items and i picked up this glass dagger uh, which is great it replaces my other dagger so it's much more powerful so i'm going to roll a green and a red that's insane um uh, i did have to add a, another time to my 
thing. Now this one doesn't have a four on it, but let's just pretend the two is a four, all right? Because at the end of her turn, it's gonna go to a five. All right, so let's pretend it's a four right now. So technically, Aisling is here. It also allowed me to add a bunch of capesicles. So I'm gonna add the capesicles uh, right after Remy here. So pretend this is one group one and two. I'm gonna add the other card later. Um, and at the end of their card, it's always moved towards the closest opponent. Um, now, um, I definitely do want to use like the shadows. I did actually forget to unexhaust it. I'm going to use it to get onto the next tile because the worst case would have been me staying here and then she would have caught me when I added my fifth time token. So I'm going to actually do like the shadows to jump onto this other tile. Uh, not ideal because I'm going to get attacked by the fragger, but it is what it is. And then this thing's going to move to a five. And I believe Aisling should be over here. I'm just going to double check the book, but I think she's on this tile. So next turn, Aisling is on this tile. And then we have pretty much two turns to make it to the middle. All right, now the cave skulls are all going to go. They're going to move four towards the closest opponent. Let's just go in order. Uh, one, two, three, done. Uh, one, sorry, one, two, three, four. Ah, uh, wait, they move at six. What am I saying? Uh, one, two, three. Four, five, done. One, two, three, four, five, six, I guess. One, two, three, four, five, done. Uh, let's say it was here. One, uh, two, three, four, five, done. All right, because they have six movement. It's going to take them forever to go through this little crack one at a time, but it is what it is. Um, so there you go. They're all done. I got to remind myself to add the other one later. All right, now Zeke's going to go. I think Zeke, I mean, he can gun it and try to hide behind the bushes over here uh, because the worst thing you can do is stay around here. Then he's going to get bulbed multiple times and we're going to add a bunch of different bulbs out there and that's not something I want. Uh, alternatively, actually, he can stay where he is and he actually has a uh, range here to do a spell on purple. So you know what? He's actually not going to move. That's probably my best bet. All right, what's great about crossing that bridge is we didn't use a lot of SP, so everyone's pretty much going to be at 5 SP, which is fantastic. And plus he had the haste, so he would, he would be technically at 6, but he can only hold 5. Um, so what he's going to do is to start off, uh, let's just euthan uh, do euthan euthanasia on it. If I hit, it's going to kill it, right? So I'm going to uh, I'm gonna empower it for sure, because uh, it only has 12 health. He's already at 6. So let's just do it. If this hits, he dies, and then we'll figure out what to do later. Um, so let's do this. Oh man, well this is a zero, so that's useless. Uh, but I did roll an eight. Eight plus six, 14. Now what's their conviction on that? I have to go find their card. Uh, Fragor, Fragor, Fragor. It's gonna be a white and an orange. They need to get 14 on this, not very likely. I uh, rolled a seven, so that's gonna be six damage on him, and their life is 12. So that's going to kill him. That's going to be another loot. We'll deal with that later. Um, now, what does Zeke want to do? He's still at 4 SP. I mean, he might as well use it. So he's going to use 2 SP to run. Uh, so that's going to be his seven, 7 movement. He gets plus 1. So 7 plus 2 is going to move at 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I think he's going to hide there. All right, he's going to get the explosion, but, you know, as it's better if everyone's getting closer to the edge here. Um, I could also spend another SP to maybe move down. It doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, you know what? Let me spend another one to move another one down here. And you know what? Because he generates a lot of SP, let's just fill him out or, or empty him out and move another two down here. Maybe he's going to come this way and attack them from the back type of thing. All right, so that's going to be it for Zeke. The Fraggers are going to go. Let me go get their card again. All right, adjacent, no, range six. Now, range six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, he has range six. So he's going to do a range six attack. Uh, now, I'm going to definitely dodge that with uh, her. So I'm going to do her uh, friend, or, friend over foe ability to dodge. Let's see what happens. All books, so that's a zero. So that's going to be two teal. Now, my defense is 12 not shooting through hindered terrain so it's just going to be 12 uh so he got an 11 fantastic he misses all right but that's going to send the bulb my way so let me get a random bulb this is random now it has to affect the most people possible you know what i'm going to place it right next to her like this 
right? So as soon as she activates, she's going to cause a break attack. Actually, you know what? Because I get to choose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on top of her. Because what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do Light the Shadows to get out of it because Light the Shadows doesn't cause a break attack. And then I'll be able to fly in. All right, but he's going to keep going. Can it move to be adjacent to an opponent? He only moves at four. Uh, one, two, three, four, no. One, two, three, four, no. So uh, he doesn't do the otherwise move, so he's done. All right, we're going to go to the orange one. Adjacent, no. Range six, no. Doesn't have line of sight over here. Can it move and be adjacent? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yes, he can be adjacent to both, and the tiebreaker is going to be Zeke because he's before him in turn order, so he's going to go one, two, three. All right, it's going to do the explosion thing. So let's see what it's going to be. So it's going to be three damage. Now Zeke has how much defense? Uh, uh, he has no armor. <laughs> Just looking around, zero armor. Uh, yeah, so Zeke's going to take three. It's going to take the three. Uh, no choice. And that one's going to take three as well. Uh, if I can find the three. There you go. Okay, so that's not bad. That's the Fragors. They're all done. Now Patrick is going to go. He's all the way down there. He's going to have to run across the whole map uh, to try to hit him in the back. All right, so it's going to be three SP. So he's at five. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use three to move. All right, let's see how far he can get. Or maybe I just need to use two, but I'll see with three. So he's going to move. Oops. Uh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, that's one uh, SP. Seven, eight, that's another SP. Nine, 10, that's another SP. So that's three SP and he moves right over here. Boom. All right, from there, he's gonna use, uh... actually, you know what? He's only gonna go till here. So he's gonna save that extra SP. So he would have used only two. All right, two out of five. Then he's gonna do like the shadows to move, uh, let me exhaust this card. To move two spaces, so he's going to go one, two, get right behind this Fragor, getting ready to blast him, and then he's going to spend two SP here to do a mm, shotgun blast. So it's going to be a red and a green. Red, green, you're about to die, Fragor. So he's got uh, what? He's got nine health left. Um, You know what? I'll empower this. Might as well spend the extra SP. Uh, let's empower it. See what's gonna happen. I need nine. Let's see what happens. Uh, this is a pretty pathetic roll. Now I wish I wouldn't have used like the shadows because remember I could have turned this three into a nine. That would have been sick. But guess what? This is a putrid roll, so his turn is over. All right, Alfie's gonna go. Um, so same exact thing. She's gonna get her three SP. She'll probably use. Uh, two of them to move, uh, so that's going to be eight movement. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to move over here. But you know what? She's going to go on the outside right over here. Um, actually, no, she's going to go over here. Man, we're going to get a lot of bulbs in the face, I think. Uh, no, but Rook is going to go attack her, I think. Okay, so I think we're good. She's going to go here. She's going to do a gore shot. Uh, so let me exhaust her here. She's gonna do a gore shot. So teal. You know what? Might as well empower it. Let's see what happens. Uh, well, all shields again. Man, this empower die has been garbage for me. But I did roll a seven. Seven plus six, thirteen. Uh, their thing is an orange and a white, I believe. Yeah. So they need a thirteen on this. Not likely. They rolled a five. Uh, so that's gonna be. Uh, do I do six? Uh... Man, the problem is she's really damaged already. But you know what? I'm going to do it. Might as well. Man, another two damage. So she's going to take six more damage. Boom. He's at nine. It's not bad. Uh, there you go. Maybe I can heal her somehow. Um, all right. So she's done. Next is going to be Rook. All right, I think Rook in two games hasn't done a single thing. Come on, man. So I'm going to give him 2 SP. I don't even think he swung his axe in 3 games. Alright, so he's going to move for 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, well, actually, he's going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. He's going to go right behind him, right over here. Right in melee. 
All right, now he's next to the objective. If she gets next to the objective, uh, this is actually going to end the mission, by the way. Uh, but anyway, from there, uh, he can attack three times. He's got two attacks here. He's got his fight drive. I'm pretty confident he could take it out. All right, so let's spend two here. So it's going to be two teal and a black. Two teal and a black with hammer helm, with a reroll. Uh, trying to hit defense. What's her defense? 11. You don't get any bonuses. So 11. And I miss. You know what? Because I rolled an 8, let's reroll this. I have good feeling about this. Let's reroll both of these. As long as I roll a 3 on the green die and not a skull, I'm pretty much going to kill it. That's, uh, oh my god, that's almost the perfect roll. If this was an 8, it would be boxed cards with 4 shields. All right, but I think I pretty much killed it. That's going to be 15 minus 11 is 4 damage. Every 2 shields is an extra 2 damage. So 6, 8, 10, 12 damage. Just on these dice. Plus, uh, remember I, I, I add a purple die because of my club ability. An extra 5 damage. Twelve. I did 17 damage to this Fragler. Well, he's gone. Uh, that's going to give me another loot card. Um... And there you go. Then the Earth Loud is going to go. We already know they're going to do nothing. Uh, actually, Zeke, <laughs> sorry, Rook was so excited about that attack, he took him out, and he still has a bunch of abilities that he can use. But uh, I guess he's just going to stay put for now. Um, uh, actually, before his turn ends, actually, no, I'm going to make Nightingale heal people. Uh, that's fine. So Nightingale is going to go last. So I sense the mission coming to an end here. So she's going to get her 3 SP. She hasn't activated in a while. Or maybe she did and I forgot to unexhaust her stuff when she ran across the bridge. Probably what happened. So let me activate her mend. Uh, used. Let's get her two tokens. Heal, heal. Alright, she's going to use uh, you know 3 SP to move. So she's going to move at uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, yeah, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. She's going to be right over here. Um, you know, let me spend another one to move. So it would have been 11, 12, 13. She's going to sit right over here. Does she have a line of sight? Yeah, she does have a line of sight to it. Um, then what she's going to do is she's going to attack using the, uh, the ability here, the Fragor. So remember, infection, she can attack with 1 SP, but that's going to give her a damage. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm pretty much going to just heal myself. Um, actually, no. I should he heal Zeke because he's more damaged. Anyway, I'll figure out who I want to heal uh, after. Um, so that's going to be an attack. Uh, I roll a teal, uh, teal and an orange. So the mission's pretty much over here. Uh, oh my god, three. Is this the lowest die on this one here? It is. So guess what? Whoops. What I'm going to do, well, you guessed it. I'm going to do kill the messenger, turn this three into an eight. All right, but it's going to be 12 minus 11 defense. So it's going to be one damage, two, three, four, five damage. They don't have armor. Another three damage, eight to damage, because remember my uh, barbed arrows here. So it's going to be eight damage. They only needed three to, three to, three to die. So there you go. They're done. All right, that's going to be another loot. And what she's going to do, she's going to use both of her uh, heal abilities. Uh, she's going to heal uh, Rook for 6 and Zeke for 6. So Zeke's going to be at 1 damage. And Rook is going to fully heal. Alright, so that's good. Uh, she's still got some potions left. I think I'm going to use some potions soon to heal her. But there you go. That's the end of the turn. Let's get rid of the Fragors. Okay, well, it's going to end next turn, I guess. So, Nightingale's just going to fly in whenever it's her turn. And that's going to be the end of the mission. Um, let's just see if these capesicles move. That's basically all we're looking for. Um, that's it. So let's see. Nightingale, Zeke, Remy. And it doesn't really matter. I won't even flip the rest because she's going to do nothing. Zeke's going to do nothing. Nightingale's going to move. Oh. We have to see what this bulb does. Let's double check. Uh, inflict disease. Okay, so I'm going to go get a disease token. But anyway, she's going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 1 SP, 2 SP, uh, 3 SP. And there you go. That's going to be the end of the mission. So I did pretty well on this one. Let me know how you guys did. If you guys even bothered with the Earth Lao 
Uh, but uh, we'll see you in the next one. Later.